Hey everybody, Jason Allen here. I'm down in Southern Utah today, and I'm gonna be giving you a virtual field trip walkthrough of a pedestrian underpass uh, that runs under I-15. Now the purpose of this project was to connect some student housing that's located on the east side of the tunnel over under I-15 to, uh, to Dixie State University that's on the west side of I-15. So uh, this is located at approximately 400 south and 1000 east in St. George City. And as part of this video, I'm gonna be interviewing some of the folks that were involved in the project, uh, asking them some questions, and also giving you a little bit of a walkthrough so that you can get an idea on what this project, what the scope and magnitude of this project really was. So uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us and let us know. We'd love to get those answered. And, and uh, this was a really fun project, so we're excited to share this with you. So this is the location of the 400 South Pedestrian Underpass. On the left-hand side of your screen, you'll see the Dixie State University campus, which is located west of I-15. And on the right-hand side of your screen, you'll see apartments and townhomes and locations where a lot of students live. And this project was critical in connecting the students living east of I-15 to the campus west of I-15. My name is Lee Cabell, uh, principal with Horrocks Engineers. I was the project manager on the I-15 400 South pedestrian underpass project. You know, the, the rapid growth of Dixie State University over the last several years has really increased enrollment. And it's also, they built new housing facilities and the campus has expanded some of their educational facilities over to the IHC hospital campus. And there's housing on now the east side of the freeway as well, a lot more housing. And so just a lot more need to connect back and forth, not only from the university standpoint, but just in general for the for the community, the next closest ways for pedestrians or bikes to get you know, across the freeway is either at 100 South or 700 South. And both, both of those are narrow roads with no shoulders and the pedestrian accommodations aren't, you know, kind of been band-aided into those to those locations over over the years uh, the one 700 south you got to go up a big huge hill and kind of up on a bench yeah. for the sidewalk to get underneath and so and then they're both you know a half a mile or so away from the main part of the campus on each side so a lot of out of direction travel for people that just want to you know go right across the freeway so freeway is elevated on some pretty significant fill through this area so we were able to put the tunnel in without changing the grade of the freeway at all or changing the grade of the connecting streets so it fit you know just fit right underneath there at that location really well and then it ties right into the main feeder road on the east side of the college kind of a loop road that goes around the east side of the campus so it ties right in kind of to the central area of campus so it was a great location to put that put that together in and then probably a lot less costly than like a definitely a lot less costly than a pedestrian overpass would have been well, you know, we've been kind of working on the planning of this since for probably a decade with different master plans for the city and Dixie State University and through the MPO and and different things. Um, I'm trying to remember exactly, let me go backwards. So construction was completed, construction started in March of 2019 and was completed uh, by by September in time for the tunnel to be open for the college, you know, that that winter semester that yeah. starts. Um, so and so we started design in in 2018. And so it, it was probably about a seven month, you know, six, seven month design design okay. period. UDOT led the job and it was underneath the freeway. So it was a UDOT project. So all the design and standards and reviews were all, you know, through the normal UDOT process. Of course, the city and the college also, or the university also, you know, reviewed the plans and looked at them. But UDOT was the owner, so to speak, okay. of the project from a design sure. and construction and environmental standpoint. And okay. then uh, St. George City and Dixie State are now kind of responsible for the, for the maintenance. We did a full UDOT type selection report analysis. So we looked at cast in place. We looked at, you know, boxes. We looked at precast. We looked at, you know, several different options. Uh, the college and the, uh, I keep calling saying college, college, university. The university 
and the city were really very interested in a in an arch shape structure they felt like it kind of uh you know opened it up let more light in was a was a, a you know more aesthetically pleasing and looked better than just a you know standard box culvert type of thing plus because they were contributing so much money to the project you know we were trying to get what they wanted um one of the probably the primary reason for the precast approach was uh just the ability to construct it faster and not have to have uh, you know, the, the freeway diverted and traffic control in place for as long as, as that would have been required had the whole thing been cast in place. This location, uh, you, you know, there's a fairly wide, wide median mm -hmm. and uh, it's really not very close to anything else, kind of the middle, middle between a couple of different interchanges. So the traffic control from that perspective was really very simple. All we did was construct some a, you know, temporary widening to the inside so we could push, for example, push northbound traffic over against the southbound lanes, mm -hmm. right? And then we dug out and constructed half the tunnel and then we, you know, pushed the traffic back over the new half of the tunnel that was installed and constructed the other half. So it was really just two freeway switches and, you know, uh, that, you, that you typically see. So the traffic control wasn't very, wasn't very difficult from that perspective. Um, Normally UDOT does the traffic control, or I mean, the contractor does the traffic control design in this instance because of the freeway and because of some recent issues they've been seeing with some of the quality of the temporary pavement you know, on, on bigger, higher volume traffic, you know, traffic roads. Uh, we elected to include the traffic control and the, you know, the traffic control design as part of the, part of the plan set so that we could specify exactly the pavement section and some of the requirements a little more you know with a little tighter specs than what the standard would allow just to ensure that there wouldn't be any issues with pavement quality or anything you know on the freeway during construction uh, there wasn't any any difference to the number of lanes or anything on the freeway so and we never we never did see any you know backing or slowing or problems or anything else you know we also did uh, you know quite a bit of quite a bit of outreach before and, you know, coordination with, with those uh, to get a lot of people on board to, you know, see the benefit of it, which, you know, eventually led to even, you know, the, the legislature allotting some funds through their education system program or whatever, you know, through Dixie State University to connect to the, to the, to participate in the project along with uh, the city. You know, one of the things that was very helpful was the St. George City had gone out and acquired all the right-of-way needed to connect the trail on each side of the freeway, you know, before the project happened. So that really streamlined um, the design process because the right-of-way was already acquired that was needed before the project happened. And, you know, coordination with that, some of the adjacent development had been happening as well too. So everybody knew it was coming. So that helped, yeah. you know, help kind of lay the groundwork to, to get it in as fast and efficiently as, it, as was done. Hi, I'm Cody with Geneva Pipe and Precast. We were involved with this project with UDOT for the 400 South Underpass for the Dixie Trailblazers. Uh, we prefabricated these precast arch sections at our plant here in Washington, Utah. Precast sections themselves uh, varied in length slightly, but overall they were eight foot segment length and had a 16 foot span and a 10 foot 11 rise. The heaviest section was about 40,000 pounds with a couple others being lighter than that. When we manufacture these types of products, we use uh, self-consolidating concrete, which is known for its uh, high density and its smooth finish. Also gives you a high strength also. This project was uh, one of our first arches we've done in Southern Utah. It was fabricated at our Washington, Utah plant. Um, it was done in two phases and there's a great change in the middle. So we have a, 2% grade on one side and a steeper grade on the other. So at the intersection where they met in the middle, we had to bevel the section so that we made up accordingly. All right, well, thanks, Cody. I appreciate your help. That's, uh, that's good information. Thank you. I'm Brett John. I'm a project manager with American Civil Constructors Southwest Division. Uh, we were the general contractor on this project. So we built the project in two phases. We built the west half first. We diverted all the traffic to the east side of I-15 and paved a little bit of a shoe fly. Okay. Um, 
and then we built this side, backfilled it, moved all that traffic onto this side, to the west side, built the east side. It took us a little longer to build the first side than the second, but uh, it was about a five month project and uh, we, hit, we hit the uh, deadline pretty close. Okay, so uh, we, we... So we built it in halves. We, we built the first half uh, on this side and we retained the dirt vertically in the middle to hold up the other side and then we poured monolithically the footings and the floor to receive the uh, precast sections and then we set this whole section um, actually I think it came in two different uh, two different deliveries but uh, we set all these waterproofed it backfilled it uh, and then put the traffic over here excavated out the other side and uh, did the same process, monolithic pour on the floor and uh, floor and footings together. St. George City Police and the University Police worked together to formulate a plan to uh, maximize security for the students as they're using this um, and they added these cameras that are monitored uh, 24 hours a day and then they added the phone in the middle uh, and that would allow someone if they needed immediate access to the police uh, they could not be trapped in the tunnels. So right. Construction went well. After we finished construction, uh, we did get a storm that came through, and we have seen quite a lot of uh, damage from the storm to the landscaping and the the, the flow out of here. Uh, we don't have enough flow out, so it will pond water in a big storm. Uh, it basically overruns this street, jumps the curb, and then just jumps down and runs. And it's undermining this area, so I'd imagine UDOT will have to add some additional UDOT or the city. This was a joint effort between UDOT because it was going under I-15, University because they needed it, and St. George because St. George owns both sides. So it was a, a combined effort between those three owners. Uh, and so I would suspect there will be a combined effort to figure out how to get the water out of here. All right, well, let's walk through this project here. So I'm standing here on the corner of 400 South and 100 East, and this is west of I-15. You can see the, the Dixie State University campus. Here's the, the campus map that shows where we are in relation to the different buildings on the campus. So as we're walking down here, you can notice uh, some of the things that, that Brett had talked about and he, when he mentioned the drainage issues that they were having. And so as, as you come down here, you can kind of see that that storm event really washed out a lot of that landscaping there but uh notice the traffic there on i-15 as as uh, lee had mentioned the the grades were really good in this area so that they could go right under i-15 and and didn't have to do significant earthwork to make this work so here you could kind of see this this big mural that they painted on the on the side of the of the underpass here. This was actually a competition that the university held to try to find someone who could could fully capture what the essence was of this uh, of the university and the city and, and and everything else. So this was won by Tiffany DeWitt was the winner and she was able to paint this mural here on here. Uh, her Twitter handle you could see down here is at uh, Live Long and Letter. Uh, so you could follow her but very cool uh, mural that they put on the side here a lot of times you'll see different uh, designs and things a lot of times you'll you'll have you know a rock wall or something and uh, but this was was a really cool touch that I think the university put on there so really really fun to kind of see that and and take a look here so as we enter into the the pedestrian underpass here you can see uh, see how smooth these walls are here notice this is like Cody had talked about this is that self-consolidating concrete that really gives it a nice smooth finish uh, this is the obviously the security camera that Brett had talked about where uh, it's under 24-hour surveillance with the the Dixie State Police and the and the uh, St. George City Police very well lit inside the tunnel you notice the lights and and everything in there um, so as we as we walk through you can see the different sections how they sealed those together they wanted to make sure they 
they came together as, as recommended by the manufacturer with, with minimal joint gaps there and, and um, some sealant and some, some mastic sealant in, the, in between there to keep the water out. But uh, again, you've got more security cameras and lighting here. As we, as we come here, this is about the middle point. This is where the phasing st uh, stopped and, and started. So this is where phase one met phase two and they, and they backfilled in. This is that emergency call button, as Brett mentioned, if someone were to get stuck in the tunnel. Sometimes cell phone reception is really, uh, really difficult to get in some of these tunnels. So this is a great way for, for students. If anybody is in trouble, they can, they can call for help and it immediately goes to the to the University Police or the St. George Police. So uh, notice also as we walk on the floor, this was obviously poured monolithically with the floor and the and the footings, and then the sections were set on top of those. But but notice the, the texture of the floor. You don't really want a very smooth finish on something like this. If it gets wet or if any water from a rain event get in there, it can get pretty slippery, and so it, it can be somewhat of a safety hazard. So notice there's a little bit of a textured finish on the floor that provides some additional grip uh, as you're walking through here. Again, a lot of this was... Uh, kept in mind for the safety of the students making sure that they could feel safe and secure as they were walking through here it's really big big open area it feels big as you walk through it as you can see and so uh, during the day it feels really really big in there it, you don't feel uh, really you know claustrophobic or anything in there it, it, it's just got a really big feel to it as big as these these units were and so as we come out here on the east side of i-15 here's as we mentioned earlier, some of the student housing, some of the apartments that, that, that these students live in. A great wide walkway here to get through. Nice landscaping and fenced areas here. And as we turn back, this is the power box here that, that controls the lighting and the, the security cameras. So notice the fence. They wanted to make sure it was fenced off so that, so that people couldn't wander up onto I-15. So uh, really, really well done and, and kept the safety in mind there. Now, one of the other things that they wanted to, to do was make sure that this was well lit at night. And so I came back at about 9 o'clock at night because I wanted to see how, how light it was when it was dark outside. And I was amazed, to be perfectly honest with you. I didn't think it would be this bright in here. Uh, it, it felt... To be perfectly honest, it felt as bright as it was when I was walking through it in the daytime. The, the time of day really didn't impact and affect how bright it was inside this tunnel. Uh, notice how dark it is outside. And when we come back in here, it is extremely bright. This is very safe. As, as students walk through here, you can feel very safe and secure as you walk through. There's really no concern for safety or well-being. It, it, it really has a big feel to it and a nice uh, safe atmosphere uh, really really well done and and what was also impressive is as I walked through this tunnel and as I came out the other side you can you can start seeing now the trail itself leading to and from the pedestrian underpass is also very well lit notice all of the the street lights that they have they're aesthetically done very well and very nice and so it it, it has a really very safe feel to it well, I want to thank everyone for attending this APWA virtual project walkthrough. Uh, this was a really fun project for me to learn about and to delve more into. And, and I really want to give a sincere thanks and appreciation to those who took time out of their days to uh, discuss this project with me, especially Lee and Cody and Brett, and, and share their ideas and their lessons learned and help us understand all the hard work and effort that went into making this project a success. So uh, thank you all for sharing that. If you want any additional information on this project specifically, feel free to email Jason Allen at msconcretepipe at gmail.com.